dear students, um, the topic of uh, today's lecture is the R&S system of nomenclature. Uh, this is a method of uh, naming uh, enantiomers of a particular compound. And R&S system of nomenclature um, uh, holds uh, uh, central. It's a, it's a central topic in uh, stereochemistry because by using R&S system, you can name different enantiomers of a particular compound. So let's start this topic. <clears throat> uh, this uh, system was uh, devised by Kahan, Ingold, and Prelog. And uh, this is a method of uh, naming individual stereoisomers of a particular compound. For example, uh, uh, you know, uh, in this slide, uh, <clears throat> I have shown two enantiomers of two bromobutane. It has two enantiomers because uh, it has one chiral center. One chiral center means two stereoisomers, two enantiomers. So, if there is no R and S system of nomenclature, it means both these uh, enantiomers will have same name. They will be called as, their IUPAC uh, name will be same. They will be called as 2-bromobutane. How to differentiate the enantiomers of a particular compound? This R and S system of nomenclature was proposed and it differentiates between the different uh, enantiomers by incorporating certain alphabets in their names. So what this uh, R and S system of nomenclature is? It, uh, this nomenclature indicates the configuration of uh, an individual stereoisomer. It, uh, it designates the configuration means three configuration means three dimensional arrangement of groups or atoms around a chiral carbon or around an asymmetric carbon of a particular stereoisomer. We chemists use the letters R and S. R stands for rectus, which means right, and S stands for sinister, which means left, to indicate uh, the configuration about an asymmetric carbon. And for any pair of enantiomers, for any pair of enantiomers with one asymmetric carbon, one will have the R configuration and the other will have the S configuration. So we will use uh, letters R and S to designate uh, the configuration of a particular stereoisomer. One stereoisomer we, we will call as R and the other stereoisomer we will call as S, depending upon the configuration. So let us first check how we can determine the configuration of a molecule if we have a 3D model of a compound. So for, uh, for this purpose, we have different rules uh, this, the, they are known as Kahn, Ingold and Prelog rules. What are these rules? You have to, uh, you know, learn these rules very keenly. Rule number one is, first of all, what you, what you have to do, you have to rank the atoms or groups which are bonded to the asymmetric carbon in order of priority. You have to rank them, rank the atoms are different, atoms are different groups which are attached, directly attached to the asymmetric carbon. And the relative priorities of atoms are groups, they are determined by atomic numbers of the atoms which are directly attached to the asymmetric carbon. So this, uh, these relative priorities of atoms are groups, they are determined by atomic numbers of those atoms which are directly attached to the central carbon, to the asymmetric carbon means higher the atomic number, higher will be the uh, priority. Like this, in this compound here, this is the central carbon here, and uh, it is attached to four different groups. These groups uh, are, uh, you know, ranked as, uh, ranked as one, two, three, four. One means highest priority, and four means lowest priority. Two and three means intermediate priority. So one, uh, you have to name a compound, you have to, uh, you know, rank the compound uh, substituent 1 or group 1 which has the highest uh, atomic number and 4 which has the lowest atomic number. So, <clears throat> for example, for example, you have, uh, you have a central carbon, an asymmetric carbon which is attached to iodine, bromine, chlorine and fluorine. So, iodine will get the highest priority because it has the highest atomic number and fluorine will get the uh, 
lowest priority because of having uh, lowest atomic number so higher the atomic number higher will be the priority this is rule number one it's very simple uh, rule number two now if the two substituents bonded to the uh, bonded to a chiral center start with the same atom means in case of a tie if the two substituents which are attached to the central carbon if uh, if uh, you know if they start with the same atom means that atom which is directly attached to asymmetric carbon if it is same what you have to do you have to move outwards from the point of attachment and consider the atomic numbers of atoms that are attached to the tied atoms it means you have to move outwards means directly attached at uh, uh, directly attached atom will not decide the priority the atom which is attached to this atom means tied atoms means second atom you have to go to the second atom that will decide uh, the priority the relative priority for example for example in this case the central carbon here this carbon here it is attached to four different groups you see bromine will get first priority and out of these out of these uh, ch2 and uh, ch2oh and ch ch3 ch3 you see uh, the, both these atoms you can see both these atoms have carbons here it's carbon directly attached to this central carbon and here it is carbon also so in this case how to decide priority so first uh, carbon will not decide the priority it is the second atom which is directly attached to this carbon and which is atta directly attached to this carbon which will decide the priority in this case in this case uh, you know this carbon is this carbon is attached to you see it is attached to carbons two carbons and hydrogens carbons and hydrogen but here this carbon this carbon it is attached to oxygen and hydrogen now oxygen has more atomic number than carbon it means it will have a priority over this so we group we label them we rank them as bromine will get number one this will get number two this group will get number three and hydrogen will get number number four so in case of a tie you have to move to, to the second atom if the second atoms are similar you have to move to the third atom if third atoms are same you have to move to the fourth atom similarly till you decide priority okay i hope it's clear point number three if an atom is doubly bonded to another atom the priority system treats it as if it were singly bonded to two of those atoms and if an atom is triply bonded the priority system similarly if an atom is triply bonded the priority system treats it as if it were singly bonded to three of those atoms what this rule means i will you know make you understand by using this example this example this carbon here central carbon it is attached to four different groups one group is ch2oh ch double bond ch2 c triple bond ch and ch2 ch3 this rule states that this ch triple bond ch it will have higher priority than ch double bond ch which in turn will have higher priority than ch2 ch3 means triply bonded uh, groups have highest priority followed by doubly bonded uh, groups and followed by singly bonded groups in other words this priority system treats it this group as a uh, triply bonded group is considered i have written here this triply bonded carbon is considered to be bonded to three carbon atoms like this it is bonded to three carbon atoms similarly this group here this group this doubly bonded carbon is considered to be bonded to uh, two carbon atoms and hydrogen means two carbon atoms 
triple triply bonded means three carbon atoms doubly bonded means two carbon atoms and singly bonded means one carbon atom so three carbons have more priority than two carbons and two carbons have higher priority than uh, single carbon right so moving ahead <clears throat> so if you have to decide priority the ch2oh you see all the four groups start from carbon so there is a tie in all all the four groups here so how to decide move to the second atom in this case here second atom is oxygen and in the rest of the uh, groups it's carbon so uh, this group will have priority number one moving on now we have to decide between these three groups all the three groups have carbon right but this group here because it is triply bonded it will be considered that this carbon here it is attached to three carbon atoms right and this carbon here so it will be considered to be attached to three carbon atoms it this one will be considered to be attached to two carbon atoms three carbons will have more priority than two carbons right so uh, the priority goes to this so number one number two is this number three will be this and number four will be this so this is how you decide priority moving on in case of isotopes means uh, those atoms those uh, atoms which have same atomic number but their mass numbers are different how to uh, determine their relative priorities in isotopes the relative priority is decided by mass number higher the mass number higher the mass number higher will be the priority so deuterium has higher uh, priority as compared to protium so in this case in this example the central carbon it is attached to chlorine methyl protium and deuterium so chlorine will get first priority highest atomic number followed by methyl group followed by deuterium and finally followed by protium i hope it's clear and it's very simple now how uh, we can determine the configuration of a molecule if the molecule is drawn as a perspective formula there are two formulas projection formulas which we discuss in this case there are many formulas but in this case we'll uh, discuss um, uh, two main formulas which is perspective formula and another is known as uh, projection uh, uh, fisher projection formula what is perspective formula in perspective formula what we do we draw the structure of of uh, a molecule we draw a three dimensional projection on a two dimensional surface and how we do that how we do this uh, two of the uh, bonds are shown by normal uh, lines like this normal bonds which we have shown here right these two bonds represent the uh, bond with bromine and this ethyl group uh, they show two groups which are in the plane of the surface which are in the plane of the paper or which are in the plane of the board and you have to write them together they have to be written together don't insert this hatched wedge or solid wedge in between them so these two groups bromine and ethyl groups they are in the plane of the paper this is known as this one is known as solid wedge it's known as solid wedge and solid wedge represents a, an atom or a group which is out of plane but it is towards the viewer and this hatched wedge this is known as this one it is known as hatched wedge this hatched wedge indicates hatched wedge indicates that it's also out of the plane but it is away from the viewer so solid wedge is towards the viewer hatched wedge is away from the viewer both are out of the plane right and these two solid wedge and hatched wedge have to be written together and these two bonds means in the plane which are in the plane of the paper uh, means bromine and ethyl uh, you have to write them together okay so this is perspective formula so how we can determine the configuration of a molecule if the molecule is drawn as a perspective formula 
for that what you have to do there are steps involved step number one what you have to do you have to rank the atoms or groups which are bonded to the asymmetric carbon in order of priority you have to rank them one two three four this is the first step right for example we have this molecule here which is two bromobutane first of all we have to assign we have to rank groups so bromine highest atomic number it will get one ethyl second highest it will get two Pro, uh, methyl uh, third highest priority and finally hydrogen which have the lowest priority so bromine will get number one ethyl number two methyl number three and hydrogen number four now what do you have to do afterwards after assigning after ranking these mark my words and pay full attention if the group are atom with the lowest priority is bonded by a hatched wedge it's very important if the group or atom with the lowest priority is bonded by the hatched wedge as in this case then draw an arrow from the atom or group with the highest priority what you have to do if the atom or group uh, with the lowest priority it is bonded by the hatched wedge then you have to draw an arrow and start uh, you, uh, you have to start from highest priority means group number one draw an arrow continuous arrow from that and move to <clears throat> uh, move to to a group with priority number two and then move to a group with priority number three in doing so in doing in drawing this arrow if you move clockwise then the configuration will be r and if you move anticlockwise then the configuration will be s i will repeat this step what you have to do after ranking the atoms or groups which are attached to the asymmetric carbon as one two three four what you have to do if the group or atom with the lowest priority is uh, bonded by the hatched wedge then what you have to do you have to draw an arrow from the atom or group with the highest priority means you have to draw you have to start drawing an arrow from bromine to ethyl to methyl right in doing so means means in drawing this arrow if you move clockwise then the configuration will be r if you move anticlockwise then the configuration will be s it is very simple so here i have shown if it is counterclockwise it is s and if it is clockwise the configuration will be known as r we'll take an example if the arrow points clockwise i have told you this the compound has the r configuration and if it points counterclockwise the compound has the s configuration i have explained it already this is when the lowest priority group is attached by a hatched wedge but this is not uh, always the case in many compounds the, the lowest priority group will not be bonded by hatched wedge what you will do in those compounds what you have to do in those cases if the group with the lowest priority is not bonded by a hatched wedge then what you have to do then switch two groups you have to switch two groups so that so that by switching this so that group four is bonded by a hatched wedge so you have to uh, carry out switching in such a way so that this lowest priority group comes to the hatched wedge then proceed in step b above iske baad aapko kya karna hai what you have to do afterwards you have to repeat step b step b means let me go backwards step b means this thing step b this is step b you have to repeat this after switching you have to repeat this means what you have to do you have to draw an arrow from the atom with the highest priority to the second highest and finally to the third highest but in this case in this case uh, 
means in in a case where lowest priority group is not attached by hatched wedge what you have to do you have to keep in mind that you know because you have switched two groups <clears throat> we have done switching here as mentioned in the previous slide because you have switched two groups you are now determining the configuration of the enantiomer of the original molecule you must know this uh, if you have any uh, if you have any uh, projection formula be it a perspective formula or a fisher projection formula if you exchange two groups if you switch two groups uh, you convert one enantiomer into another enantiomer if you switch two groups one time you are converting one enantiomer into another enantiomer if you switch two groups twice you are converting the molecule back to its original state so in this case what we have done in this case means uh, a case where uh, you know lowest priority group is not bound by hatched wedge we have to carry out switching means when we you know after switching when we determine the configuration we will be determining the configuration of the enantiomer of the original molecule because we have carried out switching so if the arrow points clockwise the enantiomer has the r configuration which means which means the original molecule has the s configuration right and if the arrow points anti clockwise which is written in the next slide similarly if the arrow points counter clockwise the enantiomer means with the switched groups the enantiomer uh, has s configuration which means the original molecule has the r configuration let me explain it by using this example okay in this example you see lowest priority group is here this is the lowest priority group and it's not bound by hatched wedge what you have to do you have to carry out switching how you switch you have to switch in such a way so that this lowest priority group comes to hatched wedge it means you have to switch uh, methyl and hydrogen only by doing uh, this you can uh, you know you can put hydrogen uh, uh, on the hatched wedge otherwise it is not possible so after switching you get this molecule now you know lowest priority group is uh, on the hatched wedge now you repeat that uh, step b what we do in step b in step b we assign priorities we rank groups then draw an arrow from the highest priority group like this one two and three so arrow is pointing clockwise which means this molecule has r configuration it means its original molecule its original molecule is this it means this molecule this molecule will have if this has s configuration sorry it's r it's clockwise it's here clockwise it's moving like this clockwise so it is r it's r it means this molecule will have s configuration right this is what uh, this is uh, you know what i have discussed in previous two slides i hope it is clear to you moving on you have to remember this point uh in drawing the arrow from group 1 to group 2 and to group 3 what you have to do you can draw past the group with the lowest priority means you can easily draw past uh, lowest priority group means 4 but you can never draw past the next lowest priority means group 3 you cannot draw past it example example is this one this one see here uh, this is the highest priority group this is the second lowest this is the third lowest and this is the lowest one right you can easily this is the you know lowest priority group 4 you can draw past it easily means you have to go from uh, priority number 1 to priority number 
in doing so you can draw past four but you cannot draw past three like in this case in this case i have shown you know you uh, you know uh, uh, this arrow here this arrow here it is it is you know drawing past this uh, group with third period you cannot do it it is not permissible so uh, if you show arrow like this it's not you know the configuration you will get it will be wrong the answer will be wrong you cannot do it so you can draw past uh, you know a group with lowest priority means four priority but not with third lowest priority so it's very important this is uh, when you have a compound in uh, perspective form what when the compound is in fisher projection form what you have to do in that case same procedure you have to rank the atoms or groups that are bonded to the asymmetric carbon in order of priority then what you have to do you have to draw an arrow from the atom with the highest priority to the atom with the second highest priority and then to the third highest priority if the arrow points clockwise the enantiomer has the r configuration and if the arrow points counter clockwise the enantiomer has the s configuration provided there is a but here it's very important provided that the group with the lowest priority is on a vertical bond this you have to do only when the lowest priority group is on a vertical bond like in this case like in this case let me show it like this in this case and this is uh, this is uh, the compound in fisher projection formula fisher projection what is fisher projection it's nothing you have to draw the compound like this this intersection point shows the chiral carbon this shows the chiral carbon and these two groups here these two groups a b they uh, they are the groups which point uh, out of the plane towards the viewer and these two groups c and d these two groups are away from the viewer they are away from the viewer they are towards the viewer so this is known as fisher projection so what you do in a fisher projection same procedure you have to rank the atoms or groups as per the rules which i have given in the last slides then you have to draw an arrow starting from highest priority means we have to start from this chlorine 1 2 and 3 so you can draw past group 4 easily so it's Uh, we are having an arrow like this means it's r so that's why it's known as r3 chlorohexane right because here the lowest priority group which is hydrogen it's on a vertical bond it's present on a vertical bond similarly in this case in this case in this uh, uh, enantiomer and this stereoisomer starting from this 1 2 and 3 so you, you, we are having this kind of arrow anti clockwise it means it should be s so it's s3 chlorohexane it's called it's very simple but this is if the lowest priority group is, is on a vertical bond what if the lowest priority group is not on a vertical bond what what should we do however if the lowest priority group is on a horizontal bond <clears throat> what you do the answer you get from the direction of the arrow will be opposite of the correct answer so it's very simple if the lowest priority group is on a vertical uh, is on a horizontal bond the answer you get from the direction of the arrow it will be opposite to the correct answer example 
you have this example here priority highest priority is this number one this is ethyl number two methyl number three and hydrogen number four so hydrogen is on a it's on a horizontal bond i have written here this hydrogen here it's on a horizontal bond so what you do there what you what we have to do here <coughs> uh if we draw an arrow so we have to start from we have to start from this oh group right we have to start from this oh group this is one then we have to move to the group two and then we have to move to the group three so the arrow comes out to be like this means counterclockwise it is counterclockwise so but the lowest priority group is on a horizontal bond it means it comes out to be clockwise it is clockwise sorry it is not counterclockwise it is clockwise this is clockwise like this so it comes out to be r but as i said here the answer you get i have written here if the lowest priority group is on a horizontal bond what you have to do the answer you get from the direction of the arrow will be opposite to the uh, opposite of the correct answer so correct answer is r it means it has to be opposite means s so uh, it will have s configuration so it is called as the s2 butanol right so i hope it is clear it's very clear it's very simple similarly here <coughs> uh it has atomic number highest atomic number oxygen followed by ethyl followed by methyl and followed by hydrogen so but this hydrogen is on a horizontal line so what you have to do you have to draw an arrow after drawing an arrow the answer you get the answer you get will be opposite to the correct answer right so what you have to do one two three it's like this so you have to go from one two to three don't do this like one three two no you have to go from one two three in doing so you can draw past uh, you know uh, priority number four so if you can see you know the direction of the arrow is like this it is counter clockwise so it is s so s ka opposite jo hai wo r aata hai iska matlab hai ki this molecule has r configuration so it is known as r2 butanol it's called as r2 butanol similarly here you have to uh, keep in mind in drawing the arrow from group 1 to group 2 and to uh, then group 3 you can draw past the group 4 but similarly this is the same rule but never draw past the group or atom with the next lowest priority means uh, priority number 3 like this one this is allowed you can do this <coughs> you can do this right but you cannot do this this one it's not allowed because what you are doing you are drawing past you know here you are drawing past uh, priority number 3 this uh, methyl has priority number 3 you don't have to do this you have to go like this one you have to reach to two you you can reach priority number 2 through this four r through this three priority but rule is go through priority number 4 not through priority number 3 so this is the correct way and this will be the this is this is the incorrect way this is incorrect you cannot do it so it's not allowed so you have an important note here if you are working with structures on a two dimensional piece of paper the easiest way to determine whether two molecules are enantiomers 
mean super non superimposable are identical molecules which are superimposable you can determine their relative configurations like if you are given two molecules and two stereoisomers and if you are, if you are told you, you, you know whether the two stereoisomers are enantiomers or they are the same molecules what you have to do you have to determine their configuration if one has the r configuration and the other has the s configuration it means they are enantiomers enantiomers in in a pair of enantiomers one enantiomer will always have r configuration and another will have s configuration if both have s configurations or both have r configurations it means they are identical molecules so it is very important you can easily determine the configuration of uh, stereoisomers by using r and s system of nomenclature this is all for today's lecture uh, in next lecture we will be doing some examples on r and s unless and until we uh, you, we solve uh, at least uh, 30 40 examples on r and s system of nomenclature it will not be clear this is all for today's lecture see you next time take care goodbye